Hi everybody. Well, it's getting a bit dark. Um, out again on another of my overnighters. So I will be at least one night out in the woods. Now, I've looked up various reports and apparently an American brigade got cut off by German forces in the woods just behind me somewhere. There's a beautiful lake just by the side of me. I've set up my hammock and my camping equipment um, and I'll run through that with you probably in the morning because it's getting a bit dark now and in the woods it's even darker. And um, yeah, I've got my usual hammock set up, so hopefully that works fine for tonight. It's not supposed to rain, although I do have a poncho if needed. And yeah, then we'll get into the woods tomorrow, hopefully, and we'll have a look and see if we can find um, where this uh, missing, the lost battalion, as it was called, um, over 200 American soldiers got cut off and surrounded, and um, the Germans uh, managed to keep them at bay for seven days until the Americans managed to break through and rescue them. 30 planes dropped uh, various ordnance and um, supplies to them. Unfortunately, most of it went to the Germans because it seems they didn't drop it quite in the right places. But anyway, um, I'm going to see if I can find some American and some German history. It's difficult with the, the maps in terms of where exactly it happened. So it's just a wild guess. So hopefully I'll find something tomorrow to show you guys. But I'm going to sign off. Um, wish me luck. Hopefully I'll survive the night. Probably will. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now. Well, I'm hoping there's just enough light to do this. I've got my bags hung up on this tree. There's two over there. And then I have another rucksack over there. I've got quite a lot of gear with me, it seems. Maybe a bit too much. And I have my hammock set up. So it's um, set up with these two trees, one smaller one, one bigger one, although you just find two that are reasonably well spaced. And inside here I have um, a smaller, thinner, ordinary uh, sleeping bag. And then I also have my down sleeping bag, which is um, really good for these sort of temperatures. It's not gonna be cold really. It's down to sort of six degrees centigrade, so not that bad. Underneath that, I have a, a mat, something like a, a bit like a yoga mat, but this is a foam one, so very light to carry. And under that is a very thin aluminium sheeting um, just for extra warmth that reflects the heat. I may be a little bit too warm with that, we'll see. But I try to go out in all temperatures, including, you know, sub-zero just so that I can get used to camping outside and not needing a fire. And right by the side of me is this lovely little stream. So hopefully I will sleep well with the sound of this stream. I'm kind of intrigued to see if there would be any kind of gold in there, but I think it's too small. And uh, might be able to hear some water falling further on up. So it might be worth having a look with the old panning uh, maybe I do that just for fun in the morning when I get up. But anyway, guys, it's a beautiful spot here. I'm really looking forward to hopefully a good night's sleep. And I'll see you guys all in the morning. Moving on. So, good morning, everybody. Um, I had a, a cool night, actually. Um, in the owls and foxes and different things around. Um, but, you know, there was a ducks on the pond nearby splashing around during the night. Um, but, uh, you know, apart from being woken up a few times with the, the noises around, it was a good night. Um, I stayed warm, which was great. A little bit too warm some of the time. But, you know, sometimes it's difficult to regulate yourself with um, the temperatures because obviously it drops down around three o'clock in the morning. It gets quite cold. Um, and, you know, it, it, before and after you can be too warm. And then, so 
you just need to be careful with the making sure you have enough clothing and enough um, covers but i mean i had plenty last night my um sleeping bags did a great job anyway enough with the talking let's get on with the show have some breakfast and um maybe something to drink and then we will see what we can find move it on so i've got the kelly kettle at the red ready uh, this is a new one so i have to um, just test boil it first i've got a lovely little stream just running by the side of me here so i'm going to take some water from there i've got my um, beautiful handcrafted so the the blade is a brissa blade and this is a handcrafted handle by my friend, the Englishman in Finland. Um, he makes some beautiful things. And I've got a, a fire starter that he provided with it for me. And a lovely, bright piece of string so I don't lose it in the woods. I'm going to set this up, put some water in it, uh, start it to boil with a fire starter. And I'll be back with you in a minute when I'm ready with the stuff set up. Right, I'm all set up with some, um, you know, cotton buds, you know, for cleaning the face. I've loosened it up a little bit. Got a little bit of tissue paper in there as well. I've got a little bit of starting wood by the side and, and there's loads of this standing twigs around. So I have plenty that I can use to get the fire going. Um, but let's have a look and see if we can get you in picture so you can see what and how I'm doing. Just check and see if you can see anything you can kind of and tilt you a little bit more. Okay, hopefully you're in picture. I'm gonna give this go with a fire steel. It's a brand new fire steel, so it might take a bit of getting going. Let's get this out actually. And let's do it so that you can see what I'm doing. She's going. She's already burning. It didn't take long at all. Let's hope that I got some starting wood with me. Enough, I might have to uh, do that again and add some tissue, more tissue paper. Yeah, it's not going to start with just that little bit, I don't think. You can see how easy it is to start these things up. And I'll, um, yeah, I'll do it properly. Uh, this is just a test so you can see. Mm, might, might go. Anyway, I'll come back with you in a bit. And we've got the fire going. Okay, so, as you can see, added a little bit of paper. I should have had it better set up, but um, you can see how easy it is to light this fire with a fire starter. Um, just one or two strikes should be enough. Um, normally one good strike should be good enough to start it with a little bit of cotton wool buds. And um, yeah, I've got some starting wood in there, so it's burning fine now, and soon I'll put the top on, and um, you can then put the wood down the inside. So I'll show you what I mean. You put the water container on and then it acts basically like a rocket stove. You can see now the fire's shooting out of the top of there. And then you just post your extra pieces of wood down the middle part. And uh, there you go. The fire get keeps going. I'll see you in a bit when the water's boiling. Won't take long, a couple of minutes. And here we have a wonderful fire going. Now we just have to wait for the water to boil. Um, and now you can obviously use the other containers. You've got um, this framework that fits on top and then you can put these containers on to add up what you want. So this is just a test boil of this and then I'll boil some water and ha have my cup of tea um, and some breakfast. See you in a bit.
And that's the water happily boiling away, ready. Well, I'm just by the edge of this beautiful stream here. And I thought I would do a test pan just for fun while I'm out. I mean, I'm not here for metal detect, I'm not here for gold panning. I'm here for metal detecting. And there is some tiny specks, which was a total surprise to me, of flower gold mixed in with this water. And if I can get it, that you can see there's, you can't really see. You can see that one there. Yeah, there you go. You can see that one quite clearly. Um, there is more in there. It's difficult to see. Just tiny, tiny flecks of gold, uh, but not much, hardly anything. So it's not a great spot, but you know, <laughs> Well, any gold is amazing when you're finding it out in the wild. And I just wasn't expecting that. Anyway, cool. Moving on. So, I'm on this beautiful, by the side of this beautiful lake. It's a lovely sunny day, although it's a little bit cold. There's a lovely stream by the side of me. I just finished camping, having my breakfast, having a cup of tea. Now, one thing I will point out about the water here, it's coming straight off a mountain. That's why I'm using the water here. If I was in lowland fields, I would want water that's um, not from there. Because you get a lot of the farmer's rubbish, um, chemicals and, and stuff in there that boiling it doesn't get out. So I know this water has come off the mountain, so I know I'm pretty safe with that. And I boil it first anyway. But that is actually my first find. And it's, um, can't get the date of it, and I can't take it, unfortunately, because it's live ammunition. But it would have be been late in the war, uh, late 1940s, because this is an iron tip. Um, and yeah, the Germans, towards the end of the war, they were using iron for almost everything. Um, yeah, so that's a German one, I, I believe. And, uh, well, cool to start the hunt straight into the war finds, which is what I'm looking for. Moving on. Well, I have no idea why somebody would have pulled up these ferns and left them very neatly to dry. But that means I'm not alone. That's not very long ago that was done. Let's go and check my equipment because I didn't pack it away fully and see if it's still there. Okay, moving on. Check that out. That's amazing. You know, come back here in the summertime when it's boiling hot. Set up your camp nearby. Beautiful lake with fishing and this wonderful man made pool. You can come and sit in and cool off. Now, that sounds like an amazing idea to me. Very cool. Anyway, such clear water. Anyway, moving on. Shut up. <laughs> and a bit more evidence of the war rolling through this area are these teeth that have been planted in here to stop um, vehicles coming through. Uh, you see a lot of them in Switzerland also, but they're <laughs> they're called Toblerones because they look exactly like the shape of the Toblerone bar. I don't know which came first, um, but yeah, cool, sort of, in a way, moving on. That's kind of a cool little find, 70s signal with the manticore. Unfortunately, as I had it in my hand, you know, I rubbed the bottom of it to see the date and it broke. But on the plus side, it's no longer live ammunition. So I can take that and have a look, see what's there. See if there's a date on that. 
exactly sure. I don't know if that's a nine mil. It's a bit long for a nine millimeter. I think it is too long. Curious. Moving along. Hi everybody. I'm sorry to put this in here, but um, I wanted to talk about this bullet just quickly. Not sure exactly why it has that blue coloring to it. Um, this is the one that um, came apart. They're such brittle. They're very weak cartridges and they're actually known to be weak cartridges because I did eventually find out what this thing is. Uh, Mark Tompkinson, thank you for putting me in the direction of the M1 carbine, but it's not. Um, it's actually a French um, revolver uh, bullet. Uh, it's an eight millimeter. Um, it's from the, uh, what do we call it? It's, I have to check my information. It's an 1892, what some people call a LaBelle revolver because actually there was a gentleman named LaBelle working on this, but it's nothing to do with the LaBelle ammunition. Um, it's a totally different company. So it's, it's not actually accurate to call it a LaBelle revolver. Anyway, doesn't really matter. Um, last year of manufacture was 1924, and this bullet, and I did find another one of these, uh, dated 1922 and 1923. Um, they were made from 1894, I believe. Um, no, from 1892. All the way through to um, 1924. Now, this was used extensively by the French uh, military, the French resistance, and also the, sh the French police. They used that as a sidearm all the way up into the 1960s. Um, now, the problem is that the Germans got hold of a lot of these at, in 1940. They captured a lot of them and they reissued them back out to their soldiers. So is, is this a French person, French resistance, French military, or is it a German uh, soldier with a, a French uh, pistol? Oh, it's impossible to know. There was LaBelle ammunition close by, but also the Germans used LaBelle ammunition um, frequently. So it's a difficult area to know exactly what this is, but I've never found one of these. It's a fascinating piece of history. Um, I'll put a picture of the pistol up for you um, so that you can see it. And it's an amazing piece of history. I will stop talking. I apologize. Um, that will be the end of this part of the video. And then we'll finish up with the next one. Thank you very much for watching, guys, all the way to the end. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'll see you on the next one. Moving on.